behind the extraordinary moment of history. This is the age of nationalism, this is the age of isolationism and tribalism. It seems that the world is just overwhelmed by pessimism. No, we should look in a very confident way into the future. We cannot continue with an economic globalization that creates these big inequalities. We would solve so many of the issues that we have in the world today if we created a little more empathy for people. We need a collective stewardship of the entire planet if we're going to succeed with the world economy in the future. We have the potential now to create much more engaged, conversational institutions where we're able to take account of the ideas and the wisdom and also the know-how of people. The fourth industrial revolution is not something that's done and over. It's a great opportunity because it enables us to deliver services of very small quantities to a very large number of people. There's tremendous progress that has been made, but we have to be mindful that the pace of change is going to accelerate. Technological disruption, globalization, climate change, demographics are coming together and changing the future of jobs. And I think that is where there's that reform needed to ensure that people are able to continue to fulfill their human potential. Basically, what is the meaning of work? Why will people work? There's always been an idea that you know, if we work less, that's great. But work isn't just about income. What is the meaning for those people? How do they self-define? That's a harder thing to achieve. We have to manage that balance and that transition and provide retraining capabilities for our employees, provide great opportunities for them as they leave the company to find other jobs, and ultimately have to be sustainable in every dimension. By making business models more service-based, we as a company can actually much better ensure that the raw materials in our products can be repurposed for a second life. My story is one of a million. I know refugees who lost their mothers on the way. And some people are saying that refugees don't have to belong to the community. What I'm fighting for is that refugees have to have the rights that normal people are having. We believe that migration will create a net positive value to the recipient countries, including in the fiscal side. So we got to do better in terms of communicating the benefits of migration and also to attenuate the impact that it has in some local communities. It's critically important to bring in more diversity into educational institutions because if you look at the world, the conflicts that are happening are not because of nationalities. They're because of haves and have-nots. The arts play a crucial role in helping to put the questions out there that really need to be answered. The Afghan Women's Orchestra Zara, there's a group of young women playing and performing music in their country, represent inspiration for many, many other young women around the world. I'm first female conductor in our country. I told to my father that I want to be a musician. My father said, okay, it's your life. My uncle said that when we saw you, we will kill you because I am fighting to open the door for other girls. Leadership really does start with where you are regardless of where that is. And the challenges that I find in my immediate community, there's something I can do about it. I don't have to wait for permission from anybody. That means not being afraid to act even when you're threatened not being afraid to speak truth to power. And above all, you must be accountable. It's not about me, it's about the people whom I'm there to serve. <laughs>